Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Revenue Throughput Podcast. I'm Jose Palomino, your host, and our guest today will be Mike Maynard of Napier B2B, and they are an agency based in the UK that specializes on something you may have heard about, account-based marketing, ABM. So we're going to unpack ABM and actually talk about ways for you, even if you're in a small to mid market, don't have a ton of resources, why ABM may be exactly what you need. So listen in as we welcome Mike to our show. Well, welcome Mike to the Revenue Throughput Podcast. Thanks very much, Jose. Great to be on the show. So so Mike, uh, just for our audience to give us context again, uh, who do you serve? What do you do for them? So um, I own Napier. We're a uh, business-to-business uh, marketing agency. Um, and we work with uh, a range of uh, companies in industrial and uh, technology markets um, from you know pretty small startup companies. Our smallest uh, client was three people all the way up to huge global um, clients as well. Well, and, and Mike, one of the things that caught my, my real interest, one of the reasons I was very excited to have you on the show today is you have a, a very declared specialization around a topic that maybe many of our listeners have heard about but aren't as familiar with, which is account-based marketing, or ABM as the acronym goes. And so that's everywhere, especially in, you know, all the cool kids are doing it, but a lot of folks that I'm talking to kind of heard about it, but not quite sure how to get their heads wrapped around what it means and what are the implications, especially for somebody in the mid market who may not have all the resources of a, you know, of a Google or a Microsoft or something like that. So could you just maybe help us define ABM and what it might mean practically? Yeah, and, and I think that's an awesome question. You know, we're, we're doing it because it's the glamorous, sexy thing. Um, and a lot of our large clients um, are very keen to do more ABM. But in reality, for me, the most exciting area is kind of the, the mid-market, um, these rapidly growing companies. Um, and the reason is ABM works so well for them. So to explain what ABM is, um, it's called account-based marketing. Um, it was developed uh, within the IT sector initially. And the idea is really simple. Um, at least the way I think of it, it's really simple. Um, and that is, you know, you've, you've got a big group of potential customers out there and some of those customers are going to spend a lot of money and some companies in, in a particular market are going to spend no money with you. Why not focus your marketing efforts, your, your time and your money on the people who are going to spend the money? Um, and so it's all about focusing um, to key companies um, that you think are going to make the biggest difference. And that can be, you know, one account, it could be 10 accounts. Um, when you get to larger companies, they potentially have a thousand or 2000 accounts on their ABM program. Mm -hmm. But it's it all it is, is taking your money and spending it a bit smarter by using tools to focus it down onto the people who are going to basically spend the most money with you. And is this to a large degree, it sounds like it's driven by the fact that uh, the vehicles for communicating, for contacting, for reaching people can now be much more granularly um, d d uh, launched, where before you'd have to run, you know, anything from like going way back, a magazine ad or a TV ad that you have to reach all the people who will never buy, weren't even in your audience. So the technology really enables this now. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I, I, I'll give you an example. I mean, ABM isn't a completely new concept. If, if you made... Um, for example, warehouse equipment. We've got a client who does warehouse sortation equipment. Um, and, you know, one of their key markets is fashion. If you advertise in a magazine that was talking to the fashion industry, then that is a form of account-based marketing because you're focusing down to that industry. But that was about as far as you got in the days mm. of magazines and old publications. Um, today, it's changed completely. Today, you can go onto LinkedIn and you can target, you know, specific um, people with um, a particular job title in a particular company in a particular country that's been in the job for so many years. And, and you can get super, super targeted at very low cost. And that's why ABM has taken off. We've gone from, you know, trying to place your ad in a magazine that, that targets your most important market to actually being able to target the individuals you care about in the companies you care about. So somebody listening, an old school person listening to this might say, well, in other words, it's like uh, the old fashioned, like sales prospect that you pick your best target and just go after them. It's like really good sales prospecting. It, it absolutely is. And, um, you know, the sales uh, guys 
quite often get ABM immediately. And they're just like, yeah, I understand it. It's just called focusing. Um, and then the marketing team who's, you know, launched this great ABM campaign, they're really excited. They told it's just focusing and they, they sort of hold back from it. And they go, yeah, it is, but look at the results we get. Um, and so absolutely, it's about driving your marketing to the, the prospects that your sales team want to engage with. And I think, you know, one of the things we've seen, and particularly during the pandemic, where salespeople have struggled to go out and meet customers, we've seen sales and marketing get much closer together. And that's had a huge impact on ABM, both in terms of how much ABM has been done. It's easier for marketing people to know who to target because the salespeople are telling them, but also how effective it is because you've got marketing and sales both bought into the same objective. So that's actually a uh that's that's like you know bears and ballerinas coming together it's it's a it's an interesting challenge it always has been right the integration of sales and marketing on paper it makes total sense uh there was i remember there was a a pretty big uh a top level executive for a large tech company who tried to coin the term sales marketing as if it's one word <laughs> to just try to emphasize that idea of that unity so it sounds like abm might be that common ground that allows the marketing disciplines to work hand in hand with the sales disciplines to create results. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Jose. I mean, what it's doing is it's, and I come from a marketing background, so I'm gonna put the blame on marketers here. I think marketers struggled in the past to speak sales language. Um, with ABM, they're talking the same language as sales. As you said, it's like prospecting. Um, and I think that's made a huge difference. You know, marketers, are able to come in and talk to salespeople in language they understand. And it makes it so much easier to both, you know, focus on the same direction. And ABM tends to be very tangible. It tends to be very focused. You want leads in particular companies. Whereas um, if you look at, you know, what was happening, you know, may maybe a few years ago with some companies that, that were just doing general marketing and they talk about, you know, ad impressions and they talk mm -hmm. about followers on social media and the sales team was saying, is doubling the ad impressions that twice as good? I don't know. Does it help me? I don't know. What's the result of the ad impression? I don't know. Um, and, and it was completely unrelated to sales. Now it's, we want to get into this particular company and we want these particular people with these job titles to do this. And salespeople get that immediately and they can come back and they can really help the marketing teams because they understand the structure of these accounts. They know who are the people to target. Um, and quite often, you know, once they, they believe there's something in it for them, they're really happy to be open about, you know, where they've got problems, where they need help and support in building relationships. And so you get this, this very cooperative relationship very quickly when you start talking the language of ABM. So let's expand on that a little bit here. Uh, Mike, because I think it's it's important for listeners who, who may hear this and say, okay, well, if I so if I tell my sales reps to find the people they should talk to on LinkedIn, they should pick up the phone or reach out to them via LinkedIn, is that ABM? And ABM is a much bigger set of activities that you can do, maybe with that same level of laser focus, but there's other things you can do to support that salesperson so they're not just making a cold call and so on. So what are some of the things that marketing can do to support let's say you've identified it's it's larry jones at acme sprockets and their team that we need to really get a hold of and because we we offer something that larry should be interested in how does marketing support that versus just a salesperson like knocking on that door trying to get through to get a meeting with larry that, that's a great question so I mean, the first thing to say is the difference is often that marketing is dealing with a lot more accounts than you could physically cope with individually. So that they're able to reach more than that one account, more than more than Acme Sprockets. Um, and so what they can do is they can engage with those accounts with things like, and it could be social media posts, it could be advertising, it could be email, it could be in all sorts of tactics. Um, and they're able to engage with that account. And then when that account is interested and ready to buy, and typically it's about a buying cycle, they can then flag that to sell. So what they're doing is they're they're keeping um, you as a supplier top of mind in those key key uh, companies, those key customers, um, until they're ready to buy, and then they're firing them through to sales. So what they're doing, they're actually doing something slightly different to sales at that level. But even if you have a, a one account ABM campaign, and a lot of companies start with one account, you know this is this is not a bad thing. Um, and Acme Sprockets could be 
you know, 50% of the total market for your company, it, it may not be a, a crazy thing to have was just one account. So I, th I think that's important. You don't have to have crazy large um, programs and you want to reach someone, you can't reach them. Um, we had something very, very similar to that. In fact, we, we regularly have it with clients. So there, there's different approaches. Um, we, we had one client who came to us and um, their director of European sales, he said to us, you know, I just need to get into this customer. My CEO thinks they're the biggest target customer in the country for one of our products. And he needs a meeting. And if I don't get a meeting, that's not going to help my career long term, you know. <laughs> um, and he tried. I mean, he tried picking up the phone. They tried the standard sales approach. You know, these guys are very smart. They're, they're very, very good at it. But what we tried was we then tried um, basically reaching out on LinkedIn and offering different bits of information on LinkedIn that we knew would be very relevant, highly technical product. So we knew we could get some stuff that'd be really relevant to their engineers. Um, and I have to say it was probably as much luck as it was, you know, brilliant campaign. But within a week, we got someone actually filling in an inquiry form. Okay. Um, and then once they filled in the inquiry form, it was very easy to then contact them, get a meeting and actually... Um, the great thing is, is, is this company, they thought the product was amazing and it looks like they're going to be a customer. So, you know, it, it's a really great story. Um, but the marketing side was about doing things that salespeople couldn't do. Um, and clearly, you know, one of the things you have, and, and particularly, I mean, and particularly in the UK where a lot of people are working from home at the moment with COVID, um, people are gatekeeping phones and, and it's really tough for salespeople and it's hard sometimes to cut through an email because there's a lot of people approaching on email sometimes you know something different works and so sometimes it's an ad on LinkedIn um, other times we'll uh, we'll send you know physical mailers I mean there, there was a an instant that everybody loves reminding me of uh, when Napier was running some ABM um, and we identified the top 20 companies within, a, I think it was about a 30 mile radius of the business. And we decided we we're gonna approach them and say, we're a local agency, we wanna work with you. And we, we um, managed to get a meeting with um, a PC company. And we did a pitch and we won the business and I was coming back and the two of us who pitched were like, this is great, we're gonna come in. Everybody's gonna be so impressed we've won the business. Clearly it was our great sales approach that did it. We walked through the door and the whole office falls apart laughing because the marketing manager who'd given us the business had also posted on his blog that um, the reason he'd given us the business was because we had a very customized, very personalized mailer. Um, and uh, we, we sent him a stone. We sent him a pebble from the beach with we're only a stone's throw away. You should employ <laughs> us an agency. He thought it was creative. He hired us for that. And a lot of people call those kind of mailers door, door opener mailers. And again, you can do that at scale through marketing. It's really hard as an individual salesperson to do that. You don't have the tools. You may not have the budget. You may not have the admin support. So, well, you, you, so you also things, don't, yeah. and you may not have you know the skill, the creativity, yeah. and you don't have the time because some of these things are multi-step things that have to be executed repeatedly. You know, like rinse repeat to get the effect. And so that is a big distinction there. You, your the scale, I think, is a really good thing that you've pointed out here, Mike. That that marketing has its role, even in this more laser focused world, uh, it's not just an extension of the sales function, it's a marketing function. It's absolutely to create interest, to, to get, again, uh, I mean, I, I love the pebble, why not? You know, uh, <laughs> you know we, I've, I've been involved with things where we, you know, sending iPads with like two minute demos just to get somebody's attention. Um, <laughs> and, and, and that's an interesting thing too, because the world has gotten very noisy so yes, you're right. People are screening their phones. Uh, people are working from home, and but they're you know typical email. How many emails? Uh, we can get you 18 percent, 38 percent, 47 percent. Are you yeah. know all these things? At some point, it's like can't make sense of it. So so in that context, that your prospect and your your client's prospects have all this noise coming at them from every possible way and perhaps everybody else trying an ABM approach toward them as well. So also they really, they're, they're in the crosshairs of a lot of, a lot of targeting campaigns. How do you, what have you found to be a best practice? Like if you're going to spend limited budget on some sort of marketing activity, what are the types of things that have not a guaranteed result, but have the best results? Thank you. I, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to answer a slightly different question here. Okay. So the first thing to say is for a lot of uh, uh, businesses you're targeting, 
your competitors aren't running ABM. And particularly for a mid-sized company, mm -hmm. your competitors are just doing what they've always done. Um, and, you know, it, it's frightening. It's frightening to see that. We talk to multi-billion dollar companies, you know, global companies, and they're doing what they did, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, they keep doing it. So firstly, don't believe there's not an opportunity. Um, there's absolutely an opportunity to be one of a few people really putting effort into ABM now. Um, and that may not be the case in five years time. I mean, I think, think you know, everybody's jumping on the bandwagon, but today there's still a lot of opportunity. Secondly, I think, you know, there's two things you're doing with ABM. One is focusing resources down. Um, and it is a numbers game in marketing. The more that a particular contact sees marketing messages from you in general, the more likely they are to respond. Um, and you see that a lot with, you know, digital ads, people very rarely click on the first time they see the ad. Mm -hmm. It's normally the second, third, fourth. Never quite understand why that's the case, but that absolutely is what happens. So you can focus down, you can break through that noise by volume, but that's not really the secret. The secret is you break through that noise by personalization. You know about those, those companies or that company. You probably know about the person in that role and what they're likely to do and what they're likely to need and how they're likely to get promoted. And basically you put something together that explains to someone what you could do to help them get promoted, you're gonna get a meeting. And, and to me, it's all about understanding the drivers of the, the person you're, you're trying to address, you're trying to reach. And that needs you to know about their role, it needs you to know about their company, it needs you to know about their industry. And you can't do that for everybody, you can't personalize for everybody. So ABM's great because it makes that number manageable. So you can deliver that great quality and you can actually break through the noise because you're saying something that's much more relevant than anybody else. Um, and probably, um, you know, actually talks to the person more on, a, on an individual, a personal level. You know, you're, you're talking about how they can be successful. And, you know, often we talk about, you know, how people have grown their careers by working with one of our clients. Um, you know, that's a great thing. When you get a case study and someone's been promoted, absolutely, that's really effective because, Everyone wants a promotion. Everyone wants a pay rise. Sure. Um, so to me, that's it. But but the only way to do that is by truly understanding the company and truly understanding the people you're trying to reach. And the only way to be able to do that is to make that a reasonable number of companies that you're targeting. So th that's all ABM is. Focus it down to a level where you can do better marketing than anybody else and you can spend your money where it's going to get a return. That's the secret. Wow. Well, that's it. And, you know, like a lot of these... Uh... See, business secrets, right? They sound in concept. You say, "Oh, that's all. I just have to do that." <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> but there's there's a thing to doing that. So if somebody listening said, "Okay, that's it. We just got to like focus our marketing more tightly on a smaller set of targets, and go deeper." Uh, what are some first steps? Somebody thinking about doing that and saying, "That's not, like I got it. ABM. We're all ABM, all in, right?" Um, what would be the first next steps to really organize themselves or to really start? Because I, I don't think it's something they could just do. It's not a light switch. There's, there's an art to this. Uh, so, Mike, what, what would you advise an, an owner of a, you know, a $10 million software company or a $10 million manufacturer? How would they embrace ABM? What would be the first steps in the first 30, 60, 90 days? So, I mean, obviously, they can pick the phone up to an agency. They can pay us loads of money and we'll get them great results. And most ABM agencies, not a pitch rate for an APM, most ABM agencies, if they understand your business, they'll get you good results because the, the technique works. You don't have to do that. So there's, there's really one big first step, which is to understand, do you already know the people you're trying to reach? So are they on your database? So if you've got a CRM or you've got a marketing automation tool or an email tool or whatever it is, do you have those people on the database? If you do, the, the most cost effective way, the most efficient way to do it, to start ABM is to start a direct mail campaign. So direct email and maybe some postal mail to try and get meetings. Um, very, very simple, not trying to do anything, but make that communication personal, make it really relevant to them. If you don't know them, you've got to then drive leads and, and that's more difficult. There's lots of ways to do this. And we could talk about you know all the different ABM tools realistically, I would say 90% of people start on LinkedIn. So if your customers are on LinkedIn, you can upload a list of companies you want to target or just select the companies as you build a campaign. 
Um, you can select the job titles, you can select the locations, um, and you just build the description of who you want to reach. And then you can uh, feed those people ads from your LinkedIn account. So to me, that is, um, you know, possibly the, the best, most effective way to get new contacts is LinkedIn. There's a lot of different ways to approach LinkedIn. Um, so you can generate leads directly on LinkedIn. You can generate leads externally. You can just do um, product marketing. I mean, all sorts of different things you can do. Fundamentally, that's not hard to learn. There's lots and lots of articles on the internet. What you need to do, what you can bring, whether you're in marketing or sales, is you can bring that understanding of who you're going to target and what they care about. And if your understanding of who you want to target and what they care about is better than everybody else, your campaign will almost certainly be better than everybody else. The, the content you create is always more important than the technology you use, in my opinion. And, you know, just a quick connection to that as we're just about out of time here. Uh, and, and I so appreciate, Mike, your insights on this. I think it's extremely useful. But in that process of identifying that target, I, I believe a lot of companies saying, okay, I'm going to do what Mike tells me. And then they're going to find, we kind of have a fuzzy definition on who that target <laughs> is. So, so it's almost like it, this could be a real good like truth-telling moment where you say like the reality is the reason you a lot of your activities may be not as fruitful as you'd like them to be is because that target is fuzzy. And if it's fuzzy, all your activity in your – forget about personalization. You're, you're kind of aiming very broadly. It's, it's just not going to be that effective no matter what you're doing, whether it's a sales conversation or marketing materials. So it sounds like a big part is like make sure you actually have – a clear view of who your your target customer is. Absolutely. And, and this is where people talk about ideal customer profile or personas. Um, and I would say the way to get that is to have a very, very small ABM campaign to start off with, you know, one, two, three target customers. And there what you'll be doing is not so much, you know, doing the marketing side, but you're getting the sales team to really understand who's important in those companies. And you can use those those those, you know, one to three companies as a model, and then you can try and run a campaign for 20 companies and see if those 20 companies respond on the, on the same way. And if they respond on the same way, you can then expand that to 100 companies. Um, and then you can go buy your island, uh, you know, in, in the Caribbean. I mean, it's, uh... <laughs> that's, that's everybody's plan. But, no, I love, I love yeah, the fact absolutely. that, you can, that you, this is so much of what is put out there as marketing solution sets require such a wholesale shift that it just feels too big and then people end up not doing it. What I love about the way you've described this, Mike, is that you really do express a stair-step approach that, that I think any size organization can take. And on that note, I just wanna make sure uh, if somebody listening says, wow, this sounds like really interesting, but there's a lot more I have to get into and I'd like to talk to Mike, how would they get a hold of you, Mike? What's the best way to, to contact you and learn more about what you do? Well, obviously, if uh, people want to get hold of me on LinkedIn, I'm Mike Maynard at Napier on LinkedIn. So search Mike Maynard and Napier. Um, our website is napierb2b.com. So that's N-A-P-I-E-R, B, the number two, the letter B, and then .com. Um, or frankly, I mean, if anybody wants to email me directly, if people have heard anything here and they'd like to ask me a question, I mean, you could probably guess my email's Mike at napierb2b.com, you know, send an email and and if anybody here is is in marketing i know most people listening are, are more sales focused but we also have our own podcast called marketing b2b technology it'd be great for people to come along and be listeners there fantastic mike thank you so much for being part of the revenue throughput podcast today and bringing us real sharp insights into account-based marketing thanks again really appreciate it thanks jose really enjoyed it <laughs>